Do you know what is the importance of Dirac notation on quantum mechanics? Do you know how in the early days of the mathematical approach Dirac created a revolution with his Dirac notation? Do you know what are state vectors and how it leads to an important foundation on the mathematics of quantum mechanics? Well, I am going to answer all these questions in the lesson 11 of the mathematics of quantum mechanics and you will be learning in depth about some of the most important factors of the ket and the bra and the notations and what are they all about in a much more deeper and an intricate manner. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to the 11th lesson of Mathematics of Quantum Mechanics. So let us look what are the topics that we are covering today. So first we will take a quick recap because it is important for all of us to learn and understand what we have learned earlier. We are also going to look into something new which is called a mathematical approach of the quantum mechanics. We will look in depth into the Dirac notation. We will understand what is a state vector in QM and what are its implications. We also need to understand a little bit about the importance of complex conjugate and what are projection operators. So first let us look into a quick recap. Now, if you have been wo watching my earlier videos on the mathematics of quantum mechanics, we have learned why do we need complex numbers in quantum mechanics. We have also seen wave functions and complex conjugate. We have also seen how complex plane is important, Euler's number and polar forms of complex numbers. These are already being dealt as the mathematical foundation of quantum mechanics. Further, we understood what is periodicity and exponentials, what is Hilbert space and linear algebra, what are vector space, vector operations, complex vector space, matrix addition, etc. Now, the question is that why I am telling you a quick recap. You see, there was a problem and I admit that problem that these th four parts starting from Hilbert space a little bit into mat matrix addition and operation, these were specifically based on linear algebra. Now, I can understand when the viewers were expecting something out of the mathematics of quantum mechanics, obviously they won't take something based on linear algebra. It is quite common. People know after knowing linear algebra, you come into the mathematics of quantum mechanics. So, I could understand there was a kind of a frustration or people were not watching this video because I was not actually telling about the core mathematics of quantum mechanics. So, what I will be doing in future is that all those which are left over for the linear algebra, I will move into the linear algebra playlist. And from now on, I will be concentrating only on the hardcore mathematics of quantum mechanics. Linear algebra will be dealt differently and separately in my playlist of linear algebra. Okay, so first we go, before going into the mathematics of quantum mechanics, we need to understand what was the mathematical approach to quantum mechanics. Now you see the prominent figures when the quantum mechanics revolution started was basically Heisenberg who is known for his matrix mechanics and Schrodinger who is known for wave mechanics. Now, these distinct, differently computational approaches to quantum theory are more or less, we can say, formally equivalent, each with a particular strength and in certain application. Now, Heisenberg's variation, as its name uh, suggests, is based on matrix and what is called vector algebra. Schrodinger's approach was more or less confined to integral and differential calculus, but there was one important person who changed everything that is Paul Adrian Morris Dirac. Now Dirac's notation can be used as the first step in which quantum mechanical calculations is derived as a setup. So after this is done, one chooses either uh, matrix or wave mechanics to complete the calculation depending on which method. but Dirac's notation, the bra and the ket notation actually revolutionized and made an easy way to approach quantum mechanics and that is what we are going into look into today's video. So first we will understand what is a Dirac notation. Now the Dirac's notation which is uh, I would say whatever is known to us, whatever is put in a ket 
So for example, if I write it as P, it expresses the fact that the particle P has a momentum P. And it could be more explicitly written as P equals to 2, the particle has a momentum equal to 2. And we can also write in the form of X equals to 1.25. Um, that means the particle's position has been at something at 1.25. Now, if I write it in this way, for example, uh, psi, it represents a state in the, system, in the state psi. And it is therefore, because it represents a state, it can be called as a state vector. Now, hold on. What is a state vector? Now, I am going to make a separate video because this calls for a lot of applications. What I'm trying to tell is a state vector is something which represents a quantum state. It is not, I would say it is something analogous to, uh, I would say, classical uh, state. But here, because we have got superpositions where we have got a lot of other funny things going around because we cannot mention a state as a pure classical state, but it has got superposition of multiple states. So that is something we need to talk about but that is we can tell is a state or a state vector it represents all the probability amplitude all the probability density of all the electrons and subparticles which are happening at a particular state so uh, what we can say from here is that the ket can actually this bra is called as the final state right and this ket can be called as the content that means whatever we write so the uh, so what we get from here is that if we write x equals to 1.25 with a bar and a psi, then what we are trying to tell is that the probability amplitude that a, uh, I would say the particle has in the state uh, psi will be found somewhere at a position of x equals to 1.25. Right. So the probability amplitude that a particle in state psi will be found at a position of 1.25. I will demonstrate to you with a further uh, uh, you know illustration and we can say that the value of the function psi at x equals to 1.25 i mean to say this is more or less what is a uh, uh, you know a cat and a bra so it is a final state and the uh, and cat represents what you put inside that is the content now what do we mean by final state i will come and explain in the next part of the video so what we say is that if we write this one squared, that means it is the probability density that a particle in state psi will be found at x equals to 1.25. Probability density again means that it is a probability to find that particle at a particular location, not that it will be there, right? So I have dealt with probability density. You can go to my videos on quantum mechanics in my playlist quantum mechanics and you can find more about probability density. But here is a graph. And this is a kind of a wave, something which is going on. We have got three points A, B, C. And if I take a fraction of a point DX, which is circled in here, we can say that the probability of finding the particle is more around the A region rather than B and C. And that is what the probability density speaks. So here you see, if I take position and time as T and I square it with a fraction of dx, then what I get is similar to 1.25. So what I call is that a bracket pair can represent an event which is the result of an experiment. Okay, so we are talking about experiments. So what I'm trying to tell is that uh, in in case that we are performing a kind of an experiment, right? So this is a kind of a funny figure which tells about the experiment. So we have initial state which is denoted by the cat and we have a final state which is denoted by the bra. So uh, I mean to say an experiment which is being done at an initial state and then we have got something which comes out of this which is called a cat and something which comes out is a bra. So, uh, I mean to say, if we write this as x, uh, we are expressing psi in a coordinate space without being explicit about the actual value, which is this one, uh, x equals to uh, 1.25, which is basically a number. Remember that this is a number, but the more general expression, this one, x followed by vertical bar and a psi, is a mathematical function. And by mathematical function, I mean that a mathematical function of x, or we could say it is a mathematical algorithm for generating all possible values in this state. And the probability amplitude that a uh, system in state has is its position x. So here it is. 
so this is the probability amplitude that a system in state psi has right okay this is quite clear now the major point what we are discussing is that this can be represented in more than one language I mean to say we can express this in more than one language so the most common language will be coordinate space which is x y z or phi or uh, theta etc but we shall see that the momentum space offers an equal important state of the function so this is it is what is called a coordinate space now it is important to recognize that this one and this one are formally equivalent remember that this one the position and this one the p are formally equivalent and contain the same physical information about the state of the system right and uh, one of the we know that one of the tenets of quantum mechanics is that if you we know this one vertical bar psi with an angular bracket we know everything that is to know about the system and in particular what happens is that we can calculate all the properties of the system and transform this value if required into appropriate language so we can say from this that a bracket is a pair which can be thought as a vector projection we we have learned about vector projection in many other places in classical mechanics so it costs as a shadow now what do i mean by that coming up in the next video in this part so you see x uh, psi which you can consider as a vector and it is going in this direction and i'm mentioning phi to be a kind of a projection so a bracket can be thought of a vector projection, the projection of the content of the ket on the content of the bra or the shadow of the ket on the shadow of the bra. Right? So it is the probability and amplitude that a system in state psi will be subsequently found in system phi. So the system psi is casting a shadow on system phi and we also call it as an overlap integral. Anyway, we are not taking overlap integral right now. So this one, I can say uh, that state vector is a complex function, a plus bi, which can be also expressed as this, right? And we can take as an example of i equal to square root of minus 1. And most important, given the relations of amplitude to probabilities, which requires that it should be a real number, that means this one followed by a star is the complex conjugate of a real number. Now, before I move to the next part of the video, I would like to make a point over here is that this is very important. This is very central. So a bracket is basically a state of projection, the projection of the content of the ket on the uh, content of the bra. So far, as I have shown here that this is the projection into the state phi onto the state psi. Okay. So uh, from here, what we can say is that if uh, this one equals to a plus ib, which is uh, of sure complex equation, and you have seen in my video, I have dealt about complex numbers before coming into that, then this one, it will be a minus ib. That means we're doing a complex conjugate, which yields to a square b square, which is actually a real number. Now, you see that we have done all the permutation and combinations in order to get a real number. Now, the question is that why do we need at all a complex conjugate? And this will be discussed in the next part of our video. So, you see a complex function is one that com contains imaginary number i equal to square root of minus 1. Now, in quantum mechanics, we see that a wave function determine the behavior of a physical system whose functions are usually complex function. So, if I take the probability that a particle have, just ignore what is the internal, just concentrate that P is the probability and we have taken two parameters, X and T, the position and the time and we have squared it. Squared it. And what we have got is a complex conjugate. That means we are comfortable with more real numbers and that's true and the complex conjugate actually gives a real number so here is the summary the complex conjugate of a function is obtaining by replacing every occurrence of i equal to square root of minus one in that function with minus i but what really happens let us see now so here you see that it produces a real number and for example if i take a equals to three plus four i and i conjugate it right i get something equals to 25 and this 25 is a real number and real number actually helps us in calculation so i hope this part is clear that it eliminates complex numbers and produces real numbers and it looks something like this 
So the wave function, which represents the probability amplitude for finding a particle, the actual probability is given by squaring it and it gets 1 and it should be normalized and we are happy producing a real number value which helps us in creating or doing mathematics much easier. So we reduce the complex number, we do a complex conjugate in order to get a real value which becomes easier to do the complex, uh, complex numbers. Now you see that what we have seen the vector or the psi and the bra and cat notations are the shadows on which the one value is reflected on that. That is done on certain I would say uh, formal vectors. But what would be that if we apply those on arbitrary vectors, right? We need those because quantum mechanics and other fields of physics should be generalized and should be uh, applicable to arbitrary vectors. Okay, so we do something called projection vectors. Now you see that we have now examined the uh, cat followed by the bra and we now appropriately study the bracket pairs and now we are ready to study the projection which are ket bra products and this is called for example we take an example of this one operating on the state vector psi and which is this right and this operation actually reveals the role of i onto psi and or we can say the length of the shadow that uh, the length of the shadow that psi casts upon i, that is the ket vector uh, casting and shadow on the i, that is the bra vector. Now you see these require something more, some more analysis and study. So we would be now uh, in the next part of the video, we will deal with role of projection operators. These are called projection operators on arbitrary vectors. So this part of the video, I think it is quite clear that we have learned the bra and ket. We have gone deep into understanding bra and ket with a similar uh, example with vectors. And we have also seen uh, why it is important to get a complex conjugate and how it deals. But we have done with a kind of a formal vectors which are not arbitrary. In the next part of the video, we will be with arbitrary vectors. So this is the uh, basic idea of the next video. We would start with projection operators and arbitrary operators and linear superposition. So this video will now be concentrating purely on the mathematics of quantum mechanics. I'm always thankful to you because we have crossed 10,000 uh, plus subscribers. So I would like to thank you for watching and help me to grow by subscribing and clicking on the bell icon to get all the notification from physics for students and I am available over email which is this one and I also do have a special a theory of relativity a special channel only to general theory of relativity. You can also follow me on LinkedIn, on Facebook and on Instagram. So we would continue, we would continue our study in the mathematics of quantum mechanics and we are, I am moving the linear algebra part to the linear algebra playlist but this would be hardcore quantum mechanics, the mathematics. Thank you for watching this video and do let me know in your comment. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and I would wish you all the best. Stay safe and happy and may the good Lord be with you. Thank you very much.